Cool. So, I've been doing interesting stuff, and no, it's not a pipe bomb. I've been trying to make a cesium still, which, um, I need some cesium, and not just a little bit, because I want to study the surface chemistry of it, and because almost no one ever uses cesium, it's really expensive. So if you want to buy cesium from a, a reasonable chemical supplier, it's almost the price of gold. Uh, whereas if you make it yourself, it's lots cheaper, you know, like 10, 100 times cheaper or something. And the way you make cesium is very simple. You get some lithium, like that, that's lithium. I'm gonna focus. Come yeah, on, focus. There we go. That's some lithium. And you chuck that in with some cesium chloride. And after that, you heat it up to a few hundred degrees and the cesium becomes volatile and you just distill it off. But, yeah, I can't do it with nitrogen there because nitrogen reacts with lithium like really quickly. You can't do it with oxygen there because then your cesium just catches fire. Um, and of course it all gets fairly hot. Uh, so when I previously did this on a barbecue, I just flushed the whole thing with argon and crushed my fingers that the whole thing would be airtight enough. Eh, it's sort of enough to get some cesium off. But this time I need to be able to do it on a much bigger scale and a lot better. So the way you can do that is you're going to get something like that, uh, which you've got to seal at both ends, like airtight seal. It's got to be, hold, be able to hold a vacuum, and it's got to be able to take uh, at least 600 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's getting on for red heat. Um, it, and whatever you do the seals with must be fairly resistant to... Uh, it, well, it's going to be molten cesium chloride, molten lithium chloride, lithium metal, and cesium. If any of what you're using here is attacked by, say, cesium gas, you know, cesium forms an alloy with it or something, then once you start making your cesium, it's just going to rot away your seals, the whole thing's going to leak, and that's going to be the end of it. Uh, in the first instance, um, when you're doing dangerous stuff, there is always a phased approach. Uh, the first thing is you just sort of do some proof of concept stuff, and once you're sort of convinced of that, you move on to the more dangerous stuff. So in the first instance, my goal was set for, I wanted to distill 50 grams of cesium, uh, which is about 20 mils. Uh, 20 mils, yeah, it, it, it's about that much cesium. So it's not, great amounts. Cesium, whilst it catches fire really quite easily, um, it doesn't release a lot of energy when it does. Uh, so burning about 7 grams of cesium, so 7 grams of lithium, releases about the same energy as burning uh, 150 grams of cesium. It, it's that sort of league. Uh, so, yeah, even if it all goes terribly wrong somehow, I, it's limited in what can go wrong. I need to be able to test my seals. Now, the thing is that I'm not very good at working with metals. Normally, I, yeah, with glass, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Uh, so, my first response would be, fine, I just made the whole thing out of glass. Problem with that, lithium eat glass like a son of a bitch. In fact, I did promise you on this channel some time ago, I will show you why you should never get molten lithium anywhere near glass. Uh, absolute nightmare. Um, so you can't make it out of glass because you're dealing with lithium. If it was just the cesium on its own, you can distill the cesium in the glass without too much trouble. Um, so in the first instance, uh, when I'm getting the uh, the lithium and the cesium chloride and I'm distilling off the cesium, it's got to be in an all metal apparatus. And so yeah, you're looking around for something cheap, fairly solid. Steel is fairly resilient to lithium and cesium. Um, and so I've been practicing my joining skills uh, with metals, which in real terms basically equates to I have been torturing metal. Uh, my first attempts at welding um, will 
make uh, many people who are any good at welding absolutely wince. So it's a MIG welder, there's no protective gas or anything, but this is sort of almost literally my first attempt at doing it. Uh, and it, it's okay. Structurally, it'll hold. You know, I, it doesn't need to hold great loads or anything, but it does need to be able to, be able to hold a good vacuum. And this doesn't hold a good vacuum. Um, and then I tried welding one of these guys shut, which was equally, come on, focus, focus here, come on. Focus, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so this thing, uh, it, it's almost airtight. Uh, with, with a bit more practice, I could probably do it. But MIG welding, uh, we, when you need it to vacuum tight, nah, I, uh, I'm just not that good. Uh, however, there are various uh, lower temperature options available to you, actually not that much lower temperature. Uh, like sort of braging. So what you do is you get your metal, you coat it up with some, oh, I have salt of some sort that sort of melts and protects the metal surface. And then you melt another metal on top that's very wetting and it sort of gets into all the cracks and makes some fairly nice seals. And with that, I had a degree more success. Uh, yeah, so that was one of my first attempts on one of these guys. And uh, if you would actually focus one, there we go. Focus, focus, yeah. Okay, uh, he's not too bad. He's sort of airtight. Not so sure I would trust that. But uh, on this little stainless steel boy, um, it, it's looking sort of quasi-functional. So this is a stainless steel can here. This will take a vacuum very easily. Some fairly chunky tubes on the side. Now you might be wondering, you know, did I just really screw up when it comes to how long these tubes are? And uh, these tubes are long for a very good reason. Um, I don't have any active cooling on any of this. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at distilling stuff. It's going to be about 600 degrees here. It's going to be about 400 degrees by the time the stuff is coming off. Metal is a fairly good conductor, it turns out. Uh, so, you know, even when I was doing some of these joints, it was getting too hot to hold here. But, at the end here, this is just epoxy holding on the, the glass thing. So what's going to happen is the cesium is going to drop out the end there, and it's going to go through the little constriction into the flask. Flask's got a brake shield on, so I can, it'll be perfectly sealed, but, uh, you know, when I want to open it later, I'll put that on another piece of glass and then I can just break the, the little seal here with the magnet. Um, so once I've got all my cesium in here, I'm just going to seal it off there. And, and that should hopefully be it. So that, the, the reason this is so long is it has to get down cool enough by the time it gets to here that it's not going to trash the epoxy. If it trashes the epoxy, I lose the seal, air gets in, the whole thing is kaput. Uh, I'll, what I'll almost certainly do is I'll put a, a towel, a towel, yeah, a little serviette or something over here, which I can constantly spray with water to make sure that this doesn't get above 100 degrees. That should be fairly sensible. Likewise, I need to be able to get my lithium and my cesium chloride in here. So that's what the long tube at the top is for. But again, um, I need to be able to connect uh, something to put the vacuum on at some point, and I don't have any metal to glass seals, uh, so it's just going to be a, a rubber seal here. And in, in principle, right, once you've backed it down, you should just be able to seal it, and that's it, you're done. Uh, Prudence says that when you're doing it for the first few times and you're not entirely sure what's going to happen, uh, you leave it open to the vacuum system because when it's open to the vacuum system you can see what the pressure is in the system and if the pressure starts going up for any reason there's no real way it can but if air starts getting in here you'll see the 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 pressure change uh important need to know information uh so yeah hopefully i'm going to give that a go tomorrow and see if i can actually distill 
some cesium. Yeah, so it might go for 50 grams, I reckon. So to distill 50 grams of cesium, yeah, you don't need much more than that of lithium. Because the molecular weight of lithium is like seven. Molecular weight of cesium is 130 or something. So you don't need much lithium to make a lot of cesium. Gil, so um, wish me luck for tomorrow. And uh, have pity for my tortured metal.